Because for so long it was, you know, the guys were in charge kind of thing. And I was content to be the muse or, you know, the, the inspiration. But I realized that by being the muse and the inspiration, I had helped choreograph so many pieces. And there, there was that little uh, voice inside me that could choreograph and set a ballet kind of thing. Okay, with director uh, Catherine Rozak, Woman at the Top is the feature film. It's 56 minutes long, play the Dance Experimental Music Film Festival. Terrific film, and it's in the, the title is in the film, basically. The, uh, it's about women at the top in the dance profession, in its general sense. You interview women professionals in the dance world who are at the top, who are the leaders of the of the future, and the, the, the present and future generation, I guess, right? Yes, absolutely. And... This is the moment now in the arts for women leaders. We have so many of them coming into leadership roles. It wasn't the case even five or 10 years ago. And so this is uh, a moment that we wanted to capture because we have so uh, many women coming into ballet companies, opera companies, into film, into directing. And this is just almost a revolution. So we wanted to... Uh, take that in and take in the women's stories. So part of my ignorance being uh, a white male, because all I know is the dance world, because I, I take my daughter there twice a week to dance classes. And all I do, all I see is women. I don't see men anywhere. I'm generally, sometimes I'm the only dad who drops off the daughter as well. So I'm a, I was assuming that, even before like watching your film, that that in the dance world, especially women dominate the dance world. But I guess that's not the, that's not the true. Well, we see women everywhere, yeah. but they're not always in leadership roles. There are more of them now, but more importantly, they're not always paid the same as as their male counterparts or they're running much smaller budgeted companies. So you can do the data, but if you're not taking all of that into account, you're not really getting the full picture. 100%, yeah. So, yeah, because for example, in modern dance, there's always been many, many women leaders because they broke out of the ballet world, which is much better funded, and they run much smaller groups with a lot less money. So you can say, well, we see women everywhere, but how are women being treated? Are they being given the same opportunity? Are they being given the same visibility? Uh, there's many choreographers, we can name them. And even in our own field, we don't know them. But we'll say, I've never heard of that person. And it's because even the publicity machine emphasizes people who make more money. So, I mean, for example, Taylor Swift is incredibly famous. She's also very rich. So this is the problem is that she's in the upper, upper tiny 1%. Yeah. There's not many people there uh, period, but there's even less women. Yeah, Taylor, well, Taylor Swift, to be fair, is the 1% of the 1% of the 1%, right? So <laughs> she's a billionaire, right? So, but you can't use that as a, as some, as a stepping stone, right? Because she's just, no. she's an aberration, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah. So, okay, so in the dance world, like there's certain, like if you go look at the sports world, there's somebody who's a GM of a team. I'm just kind of using an analogy, Hope, bear with me for a second. You know that that's the person that's the that's the the elite position, right? Yes. In that field, or someone in the filmmaking industry, if they're they're, they're a studio head or their director or whatever, they're in the elite position. So, what is the elite in a dance world in North America? What's an elite position to have? The elite position would be an artistic director of a ballet company. Of what or like of, of a, some, San Francisco, New York? Like yes, something. New York City Ballet or San Francisco Ballet. Uh, yes, or the San Francisco Opera, or the San Francisco Symphony. My film focuses on dance, but many of the programs of my dance company, outreach programs, Dance Lumiere, are actually multi-arts. We work with women filmmakers. We work with uh, women who are writers or just visual artists. And we will have whole conversations that are similar to the film uh, to create community and collaboration and also for greater visibility to audiences. And this is why the film was made. Gotcha. And so how in those big positions, are women in those positions now? Yes, we okay. have a, a woman conductor now at the uh, San Francisco Opera. We have at the San Francisco Ballet, Tamara Rojo. And it remains to be seen whether they will select a woman at the San Francisco Symphony. We have Wendy Whalen, who is um, the Associate Artistic Director of the New York City Ballet. And she has been there for a number of years, and that's new and that's rare. 
Uh, and we have a number of other women going into dance company leadership roles. But this is very new. Even five years ago, certainly 10 years ago, you didn't see it. Sometimes women founded companies, and that was when there was a lower budget once again. And also, it's interesting, all the women coming in after COVID, because the companies have budgetary issues. And women come in, they're not always the choreographer. They're not always the creative artist. Women are coming in now to be managers and sort of take care of the mess and the budget issues. And it's not the same as a male director who comes in who is also a creator. So you don't see so many of those. Oh, so you're saying that that basically they're just like they're doing the 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 business side, the administrative side. They're not doing the creative side. And yes. men would do end up doing both. They would do the administrative. Yes, the administrative not side. always. I mean, the trend lately has been to not have that as much, but certainly sure. in the case of George Balanchine, who ran the New York City Ballet, he <clears> was a creative artist, but he was also very much in charge of the ballet company. Uh, and so you had a, a directing head that's also a choreographer. Uh, Helgi Thomason at San Francisco Ballet would be another example. He's contributing a ballet almost every season as a creator, as a choreographer, and he's also running the company. Uh, there will often be a person who's in charge of the money, an executive director. Mm -hmm. But I'm still saying that you will see with women in leadership roles that they are in effect uh, coming in and they're not the choreographer. Gotcha. They're curating and selecting they're in charge of programming and they're in charge of managing the company, but they are not necessarily endowed with this creative role as if you can do both. And I hope that model doesn't go away because that's actually what creates the personality of a company. You know, that's that's how the that's what's happening in the film industry now, where a lot of women are producers, but they're not yep. necessarily directing the film, but they're like they're they're in charge, they're producing the film, but they're not there's still a smaller percentage of direct female directors. And it's almost the same analogy what you're describing, so. Yes, yes, that's what's happening. It's, uh, it's so yes, we see women coming in, but they're coming in in an entirely different way. Yeah. So I'm longing to see actually more Taylor Swifts in our industry, you know, women who do it all and who <clears throat> are supported and who can go to the very top and, you know, make that kind of money as a creative artist. I mean, what's wrong with that? You, you mentioned here <laughs> for the second time, so I'm gonna jump on another analogy. Whereas what makes her great is that she has longevity, right? Where yes. generally musicians, they have they have good, a, good, a good few years, maybe five years at best, female musicians especially, and then they're done. But she keeps going and getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And I guess that's what you need with these in this world as well, right? Like you just don't want a flash in a pan. You want someone who's been, who gets the job, but does it for a long time, one would assume. So you can really see the vision. You can really shape the vision. I mean, how are you going to show your vision if you're just there for a couple of seasons? Yeah. You know, and that's the, that's the issue. It's very hard. It's very hard for independents as well, because they don't have the platform to continually create. An independent artist has to reinvent the wheel every single time for every project. And it will be based perhaps on what they did before and the success of a previous film, but mm -hmm. they don't have the platform. It's not like there's a, a studio. It's not like there's a company supporting this person and going, oh, yeah, you're great. We're, we're going to produce a ballet of yours every year. We're, we're going to support you. This doesn't happen very often for anybody, but it happens less for women. But that's going to change, though, right? Yes, it is changing. It is changing. It's slow. It's still slow. There's still a lot of attitudes i can't tell you how often you know i'm on i'm on set or i'm doing something technically with my dance company and i have to remind people because people especially guys who are very good at tech will come in and say well we're gonna do this we're gonna do that it's gonna be positioned this way and i'm like well i'm in charge i want it to be like this you know we're doing this and you know i have to tell you i still feel the societal pressure to put a smile on my face when I'm saying this. Yeah. And I feel like a man does not need to do that. They just use their voice and say, we're doing this. Yeah. And with a woman, you have to sort of smile and be sweet and put a lot of sugar in order to ask for what you want. It's still like this. And that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, no, it's, well, it's, it, I guess that if a man does it, then he's strong. If a woman does it, she's a bitch, right? So Exactly. And people think you're just too aggressive and too assertive. And I've been told all the time, uh, you belong in New York. 
but hopefully we're changing we're evolving it's 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 really like well there's obviously women as well who basically you know when 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 women's rights came in the 70s i'm just from my historical reading a lot of women were against it right so basically it's it's because they like the status quo but generally speaking it's the men that you have to change right like the order for progress to change the men's our personality needs to to evolve to the and, the and the more we see women in leadership roles from our first job to our last job right the more we get used to it right so but if we don't we never see it then then we're uncomfortable and then we're men right so yes well we still yes that's still going on and i think that is part of the <clears throat> women's movement that is very hard is that uh it doesn't always include men well how are you going to change things if you're not also dialoguing and and yeah. talking with men and and uh, being heard. Women already have voices. They're not always necessarily heard. Yeah. And they are there creating. They're just not always visible. And that is the goal of my projects, my work, my films, is to make the unheard heard and the invisible visible. And also, I agree, though, the dialogue needs to take place with however people are identifying with their gender. You know, everybody needs to be at the table. That's what inclusivity is. And it doesn't mean, oh, men get out we're done with you. Yeah. And I think a lot of women are making those choices. I hear it every day. I hear I hear it in the dating scene. I hear women just saying, oh, done with them. They're so terrible. And we're going to date each other now. I hear that every day. <laughs> I think, I mean, is that the solution? So I just feel like... Um, well, you can't blame them, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. no, but that's how far apart the sexes have gotten I don't feel there is enough dialogue. And that's interesting because on in one of my recent programs, I was told, why aren't you doing this for the male dancers? You know, they're oppressed too. So yeah. well, <laughs> I, I, I can go on a whole tangent about, because my I believe that my five-year-old son wants to dance. Yes. But he doesn't see any female dancers. Right. Yeah. So he goes to my daughter's like recitals and competitions and he he, he doesn't, there's no men, right? So then like he, he doesn't feel comfortable to do it. Well, dance is an odd place in a way, but it's a, a great platform to work on all these issues because yeah. you have little boys that might want to dance and are fearful. And I have think there's a lot of them. That, yeah, and having been told that the feminine is just, you know, get out in this culture. Like we don't make space for men to have creativity and sensitivity, which is in the arts. And then on the other hand, we have women who are there expressing themselves, hardly able to get paid. I mean, there's still this sugar daddy complex. I mean, it's left over from the Degas paintings, the famous impressionist paintings where you see a man in a black top hat standing in the wings and these dancers. Well, it wasn't so nice because a lot of those um, young girls were prostitutes. I mean, they were the daughters of single mothers who were laundresses. Degas made paintings with these women. And how were they going to earn a living? They put their daughters to work. Their daughters went to the Paris Opera Ballet and they were dancers and they had male patrons. And this kind of thing was going on into the 1930s. And some people say it's still going on yeah. in various mm -hmm. aspects of the ballet world or in our art scene or in film. We've had the whole Me Too movement. I mean, this is often when you see a woman who's successful, people think, well, who's behind that? Either she's a trust Which fund or one. she's got a man supporting her or a rich husband. Very rarely do women um, do it on their own or seem to be respected or understood for doing it on their own. And that's why I came back to some of those huge pop stars because whether you like their work or not, the thing is that they are making it, maybe not at the beginning, maybe they had a manager, agent, family backing, we don't know. But when they're ultimately on that role and they're becoming a superstar, they did it on their own. There isn't there isn't some guy like standing in the wings where you point and go, oh, yeah, he's he's helping her. It isn't like that. And so I think this is why it's been so powerful with young women, actually. And I'm even thinking about it. You know, whether you like the music or not, these are examples. They're the best examples we have, even more than actresses. You can think about Angelina Jolie. You can think about all of these. But you always think, well, gosh, what was going on in their background and Me Too and what what men helped them up the ladder, yeah. you know, to have a woman be able to do this on her own and to be a phenomenal success is just important. I want to see more women able to do it though. That's yeah, what I want. I, I think you will. I think that generally speaking, it's like, there's a huge shit, even CEOs and companies are females. And then it takes one generation for people to adjust to something. And then the next generation, it's almost like, you know, gay marriage or whatever. Nobody really cares right. anymore. Right. And so basically, but, 
20 years ago, Barack Obama said he doesn't believe, you know what I mean? It's like right. he had to go against it. But now, like, that's crazy, right? So it takes a generation for things to kind of get figured out. And I think this is what's happening with, like, leadership roles. And I think you're 100% uh 100 accurate with basically i think also you know what's missing is mentorship i mean wouldn't it be cool if some of these pop stars mm -hmm. are really successful women had programs whereby they're bringing along other women you know yeah. but that's my perspective my perspective is lift the field that's not everyone's perspective some people's perspective is me myself and i i got to get out there with my career i don't care about anybody else and that's that's fine that's just a different kind of take yeah. on it all you know but um yeah, I just think there's so much more work to do and we're doing it. And I I long to see more dialogue with all the, the different gender identifications and also with um, women bringing other women along because yeah. that's something new. That is not talked about a lot. How do women actually collaborate rather than compete? You know, gotcha. Um, it's very complex, all the things that have to go on. It's not just stick a woman in there, now she's in charge, we're done. Mm -hmm. It's it, it, We're talking about major adjustments in relationships and in society and expectations. I mean, you know, often it's there's a lot of uh, uh, room or space given to the idea, standard ideas of, oh, you have to choose between career and motherhood, or that somehow if you're a mom, you're not a, such a great artist or, you know, vice versa. But I think there hasn't been a lot of room given to what are the challenges just in general? I mean, if a woman or a person is a soloist is on their own, that's perceived by society as kind of weird. Like you're not a full person because you're not doing this whole big family thing. And, yeah. you know, why aren't we allowing for success to take all sorts of, of forms? You know, there's obstacles. We were just talking about this the other day in one of our dance linear dialogues, which is that women are asked to perform all the time in their lives, perform the role of mother, perform the role of caretaker, perform the role of girlfriend, uh, per, per, perform the role of whatever it is, so that when do you ever get to be yourself? So hopefully in your art form or in your creativity, you're yourself. I mean, women have had to do such extreme things. I mean, I think of Emily Dickinson, what she did to be a poet, how she cut herself off from the world, wore a white dress like she was married to her art, never went out, and yet at the end of her life, they found all her poems written on receipts and sides of paper sewed together into little books, and she was a genius. So that is what she had to do in her time in order to be herself. So let's talk about the people that, let's look at your film. How many people did you interview in total? Well, for the film, there's four in this film, but I have kept going. I have other shorter films and uh, newer artists you know, even this film lasts about an hour, but there are other films that are now, you know, 10, 15 minutes, which are based on interviews because I really wanted people to tell their stories. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to just hear from the artist. If we had a bigger budget, we could tell the story in, you know, an even more fascinating way and follow the artist around for the day and go into the studio and do various things. But this is bare bones. It's just the story. We sit and we do an interview and we ask them to tell us the most important things in their lives. And it's behind the scenes. A lot of, of audience members or regular general audience doesn't really know that much about the dance world or about these women. So there's a big learning curve right there and also an opening, like we're opening the door into uh, a whole world that exists there that people really don't know about. Yeah, you're just scratching the surface in a lot of ways. It's a fa it's fascinating, these interviews, these people. Just to go back to what you were talking about before, I, I honestly, I believe that's your sequel, talking about the nuance about, about what someone does when they're in that position and kind of following a person around on their daily kind of journey, being the leader of this, you know, a big company and, and from a creative and, and uh, structural standpoint and about like staying there. Right. You're talking about like not only like getting there, but also making sure you stay there and create a legacy for the future, I guess. Right. And helping out people coming up behind you. Absolutely. That's the whole goal. And in fact, with the film, that is what I wanted was this idea. My original idea was to shoot, you know, a scene with a young girl in a dance studio looking kind of bored and not engaged because there was nothing there for her. And then for her to see this powerful female leader come in and start directing and and, be, and being in charge and for the young girl to look and, and aspire to that because you have to be able to see examples in order to become it. When I was dancing, I was told to stand in line and look like everybody else and to be an absolute uh, conformist. And 
there was no room for choreography. I had all sorts of choreographic ideas, but I was in a serious ballet school where the idea was, we're going to put you in this cookie cutter mold and you're going to come in this way and turn out that way. And that's all we're interested in. We're not interested in your, your voice, your creativity, your imagination, your ideas. And that's reserved for choreographers. And most of the choreographers at that time were men. So I just was sort of cut off, like, that's it, done. Stand in arabesque, get your arm in front of you, have a body like this. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's actually pretty brutal when I think about it. And, you know, I grew up in that world. And then all of a sudden, you know, I realized much later on when I was a mother and I was struggling to get my work done, that there had been this ceiling, this thing over me my entire life. And I think even the daughter of a feminist, my parents, Theodore and Betty Rosak, he wrote The Making of a Counterculture. They wrote together Masculine Feminine. Uh, I, even with all of that consciousness, I still didn't get it until I was experiencing it in my life. And I think that's what we need to talk about is how we experience these things in our daily lives. That communicates to people, you know, how does the work get divvied up at home, you know? What I know a friend right now who's making huge career choices. Everything has to be sort of like because of the marriage, how the, you know, husband wants things to be. And I see her slowly every day sacrificing her career and putting that second to other concerns. And I don't I don't see very many men doing that. They put themselves up front center. This is what I'm doing. I'm doing that. I'm going to ride my bike. I'm going to go play guitar. Me, 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 me. <laughs> It's, it's how we're conditioned, I guess, right? You're not wrong. Yeah. You're not wrong when you say that, basically. Like, but and sometimes the funny thing is, is that is that they're the, some the men become the matriarch, or whatever. But the woman's actually the leader. I see that in yes. a lot of families where you see the mom or the, the uh, is the the actual like she's she's the leader. She's got the natural skill set. But for some reason, there she's still she's still like whatever the dynamic of the relationship is. But she's still conceding to the men because that's conditioning, right? Like it doesn't it doesn't take five days to change that. It, this is like this is seeps of centuries of 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 male dominance, right? So yes, there's nothing wrong with it either. <clears throat> by the way, when someone wants to run off and go do all those things and have their freedom. But I want women to have that too. Yeah, hundred percent. Women to be able to say, "I want to go ride my, you know, motorcycle, or I want to go and paint my canvas, or, uh, you know, play uh, saxophone, whatever it is." I just don't hear women saying that. Like my women friends are not announcing to me, "I'm running off to do this today." But you know, all the guys I know make space for that in their lives. And I agree with you. There's this idea. Oh yes, the woman is really in charge. It's almost like a false archetype because yes up to a point but is she really in charge does no. she have her own no. bank account is she buying the property is she in charge of her life or is she just sort of in charge of the household and gets her say up to this point this point and then we say oh this woman's such a leader my mom was so great she really ran the household well really did she really did she make all the decisions no i mean women didn't even have credit cards we don't have, we still don't have equal rights in this country no you know, so but at the I, same time, there's the, you see change. There's, there's there's massive growth, right? So you're you just gotta. It's basically you just have to sustain that that growth, right? Because there's gonna be people. You we see it politically all the time. We want to take that down, right? They see too much woman. Women are too have too much power. They have too much control. They have too much whatever, right? You're gonna change. You're gonna you're gonna. Women are gonna change this election. I'm not even just talking about the presidency. All of them. All the elections, right? There's I agree. Like, it's 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 there right and then people are scared out of their trust me as a man men are scared out of their minds and that's what you have to like it's not well, going to be gonna easy. interview you what are you scared about i want to know i'm not scared i because i'm i'm Just doing this i'm doing this, this for a living i like i i I've come to peace, <laughs> but because I'm, I'm, I'm just being honest with you, right? Maybe I am. I'm, that's not 100 true. I'm like I, I'm probably a little bit scared, but scared but basically, of what though? What are you scared of? I'm just trying to. <laughs> I don't even know specifically. I'm just like uh, I don't even think I am scared to tell you the truth. I'm just trying to. I'm trying to be modest, I guess, right? But I see it with men because it's like we're conditioned to do a certain thing, be a certain way. But you see it like it's happening everywhere, right? It's happening with men everywhere. That's why they're so, that's why they, they have a crazy person as their leader. No offense. And, and so basically- You're in Canada there, aren't you? Are you in Canada? 
Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so I, I'm allowed to say that. So basically, well, my dad wrote this book called World Beware, and it was all about this, you yeah. know, I don't know, close to 20 years ago. Uh, and it couldn't be published in this country. It had to be published in Canada. There you and go. It was all about what's going on here, very prescient, and <clears> saw all these yeah. trends. And so that's why I said you're in Canada, because I, I always remember that thinking, wow, this book could only be published there. It couldn't even be published in our own country. Yeah. And with all these changes in abortion rights and, and these kinds of things, I mean, it's actually pretty scary. It's It feels scary. I think we're being treated in this country as women as really second-class citizens. Um, it, it creates a weird vibe. I mean, when you go around doing your business. So I think there's a schism because... I mean, I think all our arts leaders should be talking about that because, you know, here's this idea, oh, we're in charge. Oh, we have money. Oh, we're running this company. Or look at me, I'm a billionaire now. But like, what other women are you bringing along? Because while you're doing this, there are women who are dying because they cannot yeah. get an abortion. Yeah, 100%. No, this is the, like, you see that and you got 35% of your, like not to go on a segue, but you're th you got 35% of the country that basically is scared out of their minds with women. They don't even know how to talk to women. They basically, they want to undermine them and they're going to vote accordingly, right? <laughs> and it's like, that's the that's the underlying thing. And it's like, and they might win. It's 50-50 chance. Well, I was scared even just now. I mean, just yeah. while I was speaking, I thought, oh gosh, you know, where's this going to be seen? And am I going to have troubles now? Because I just came out and said something. You know, that's terrible to be in our country and feel oppressed and censored, you know, but that's going on. This is real. This is real. Yeah. But you like to, like to think that you're with kindred spirits, though, or people that who are like minded people in the arts and like who are making films like you're making and and or in my case, helping screen like helping showcase a film like yours because it's it needs an audience, right? So you the, you there's you have a lot of you know people behind you, right? It's just that it's just like a I think that you're you the film that you're making is important, but I also like I said, you're, I think you're just scratching the surface. I think there. Right. There is, like I said, there's more nuance in in what you're talking about, like that needs to be spoken. It's like it's like it's so it's so interesting about mentorship, right? If we see something as a child mm -hmm. in our formative years that oh that person is doing that, it just gives us the confidence I can do that too, right? That's right. So right. It's very. I mean, I think in a way the film is a little subversive because it's it's not expected. You know, it comes in a very feminine package. You yeah. know. Because dance is full of these beautiful women, you know, but nobody really knows what they've gone through and their struggles and what's, you know, how hard it is. It's just sheer grit to be a ballerina. It's like being a football player and you're injured all the time. Your toes are torn up, you know, your, your mind and your body and everything is sacrificed in order to do it. You actually have to be made of steel somewhere inside and people don't realize this. And so women have come on these incredible journeys, you know, with their, their bodies, their minds and their spirits to get to where they are today and that is what the film is showing and it's saying let's let's hear this and let's make room for even more creativity because we're talking about half the human race so mm -hmm. how can we not include half the human race so just one last point because i want to jump on what you just said because like that's the symbolism of a dance chore choreograph i see with my eight-year-old where like there's there's 14 doing tap or ballet or jazz there's 14 girls together in unison. They're only eight years old and they're doing it together. And if one person screws up, the routine screws up, right? And they have to be on the same page. And there's this community that they're forming. They're not even emotionally aware of it, that they're like, they're just, they're, they're like, they're together. They're doing this. And it's like, right. they're learning so much by doing this. Trust me, there are, there's some problems with the, the dance world, but I'm talking from its, from its like, practical sense it's amazing what they're doing and you're talking about women doing being together well the metaphor is the dance yes they're, they have to one person has to, they all have to be on the same page literally right yes if, that's absolutely right and that you know that's the court of ballet it means the body of the ballet it's everybody's yeah. body together and that's the first stage of when you're a dancer you go into that and then you become a soloist and then you become a principal dancer, which means you've integrated everything. You're not just a soloist. You can do a great dance with another dancer in partnership. You can lead the whole company. And um, but it starts. But it starts. It's so it's a great metaphor because it starts with the, the the formative stages where they you you work as a routine. You work as a as a unit, and mm -hmm. then you can go off right like a butterfly. That's right. You can go off right. That's right. But, you, it's like a, like if women just do that like in, as a as a nation they form that that unity then 
they they go off on their little tangents, but they still have that unity, right? So that's right. So actually, you know, using our ballet world and what we have in a more a powerful, progressive way could be uh, a way forward. Yeah. On that note, uh, Catherine, we're very honored to show your film at our festival. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we've been talking on on WhatsApp and we had a conversation <laughs> last week as well. Uh, you're, 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 you seemed very eager, like you want, you're very driven to get this film seen. So anything that we could do to help, I really, I really appreciate uh, the time that you shared with this podcast and your, and your candor. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.